The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to your distance learning program with me, Bate Elvis Ebot, your geology teacher. Today, we will continue with lesson 29 of our distance education program. Our lesson 29 is titled Revision and Integration Activity 2. In this lesson, we want to revise or review some important points which will bring them out in the form of questions so that you take note of them. The lesson of our view includes the lesson objective, the prerequisites, we'll review the lessons, and then integration activities. As our objectives for this lesson, we're going to drill you on sample multiple choice questions on equics so that you, when you are studying, you can pay attention to the areas where the likelihood of a question is very high. We will equally bring out the link between the correct answer and a detractor. And then the objective of answering question. These are the objectives we wish to attain in the course of this lesson. We we'll take it all again drill you on sample multiple choice questions on ethics, bring out the link between the correct answer and a detractor. Because as you know already, you are the evaluation as regards your program has two papers, paper one and paper two. The paper one usually is multiple choice. Sometimes we can call it section A for maybe a different level of schools. So, in those multiple choice questions, a question is asked and four possible answers are given. Among the four possible answers, one is the correct answer, and the others, which are not the correct answers, are referred to as detractors. These detractors are almost similar to the correct answer. The ideas are similar to the correct answer. So much so that if you are not master the concept, you will be carried away easily by the detractor and you will not get the correct answer. So the detractor has a role to play to be able to decipher and to distinguish the very smart student from the lazy Words. So the distractor has a role. So the prerequisite knowledge for this lesson will be earthquakes and seismic waves. We are going to review earthquakes and the subtopic we are looking at is origin of earthquakes and basic notions. So I want to look at the origin of earthquakes and we look at the basic knowledge 
regarding to earthquakes. We will equally look at how earthquakes manifest themselves. We will look at the types of earthquakes and the types of earthquake waves. These are the areas which we are going to ask possible questions. So, we, we take it again that we have questions on the manifestation of earthquakes, questions on the types of earthquakes, questions on the type of earthquake waves. Equally, questions on the method of evaluating earthquakes, intensity, and magnitude. So, in the course of this, the questions that we have during this lesson will come from this sub heading that we have highlighted. We will equally have questions on the location, localization of earthquakes on a global scale. Prediction of earthquakes, monitoring and management of earthquakes are also some of the areas which we will be testing you are understanding of the previous lessons. So, we begin. The first question, international activity, multiple choice question. Question number one. This wave travel parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. This wave travel parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. We have four possible answers there. The first answer A, primary waves. B, long waves. C, secondary waves. D, body waves. So we have 30 seconds to reflect, and when we come back, we give the correct answer. Okay. Then Now this question is simply testing your understanding of the characteristics of waves, of the different types of waves. If you remember vividly the different characteristics of the different waves, then your correct answer would have been A, which is primary waves. Primary waves are the only types of waves that move in the direction of propagation of the wave. Love waves do not move in the direction of the propagation of the wave. Likewise, those secondary waves. And D, body wave. Body wave is a collective name for primary and secondary waves. Remember, there are two categories of waves. The, second, the surface waves and body waves. And we said body waves include primary and second, so the correct answer for this question is A, primary waves or P waves. Question two, which of these waves would cause the most dangerous damage during an earthquake? Which of these waves would cause the most dangerous damage during an earthquake? A, secondary waves. B, love waves. C, primary waves. D, body waves. Again, we are still testing you on the character of the different types of waves. So we have 10 seconds to reflect, and after that, we come back and see the correct answer together. Okay. The most Dangerous waves in an earthquake is called love waves. 
Those are the most dangerous waves. So, secondary waves are not very dangerous. Primary waves, likewise, secondary waves are not very dangerous. And like we said, body waves is the collective name for secondary and primary waves. So the most dangerous type of waves are love waves. Question 3. The basis used by seismologists to classify earthquake include A. They are classified based on the energy produced during the earthquake. B. They are classified based on the arrival time at the recording station. C. They are classified based on the intensity and magnitude of the earthquake. And D. They are classified based on the speed with which it travels. You have 10 seconds to reflect and when we come back, we see the correct answer. Okay, there are different criteria for classifying earthquakes, which we saw, such as the depth of focus and the intensity and magnitude of the earthquake. So, the correct answer for this question is C. Earthquakes are classified based on the intensity and magnitude of the earthquake. Question 4. The type of earthquake occurring at a depth of about 70 to 300 kilometers and witnessed around the upper mantle is called A. Deep focused earthquake. B. Shallow focus earthquake. C. Intermediate focus earthquake. And D. Peripheral earthquakes. 10 seconds to reflect. Yeah, remember you are, they are testing you on the classification of earthquake based on the depth of the focus. And the focus, you know, is the point of origin of the earthquake. So, using this criteria, the only type of earthquake that is located between 70 and 300 kilometers and most be noticed around the upper mantle is the intermediate focus earthquake. The deep focus will be very deep. While above 300 kilometers, that's where they are usually found. While the shallow focus, as the name implies, are those that are recorded between 30 to 70 kilometers. Peripheral is simply the synonym for saying shallow focus. But actually, there is no, it's not a scientific term using the description of it is a detractor to make you think that that could be a new way of describing the earthquake. So the correct answer is C, intermediate focus earthquake. Are earthquakes that occur between 70 to 300 kilometers and they are witnessed around the upper mantle. Question 5. It shows a figure of the structure of waves produced during an earthquake. And this is described as the seismogram. The diagram is showing the seismogram, showing the different types of waves. Now, the question is, which type of seismic wave is represented at the point Y on the figure? If you look at the figure carefully, you find the first set of waves that arrives are they are labeled X, the next set Y, and the third is Z. 
So reflect for three, five seconds, and then after you take the quick, the correct answer. Okay, so which type of seismic wave is represented at the point Y on the figure below? A, primary waves. B, real surface wave. C, secondary waves. And D, love waves. When we're studying types of waves, we say that the first waves to arrive, the recording station, are P waves. Thus, when we look at the recording of these waves, we say that these are the first set of waves that arrive at the recording station. Hence, these are P waves labeled X. Then, after we notice the next set of recording, which are the second set of waves recorded, and we say that the second Set of waves recorded by the recording station are secondary waves. Hence, the correct answer for our D is the correct answer. It is second, the wave record at the point Y is the secondary waves. And the last set of waves to arrive are at the point X. So take note. This letter X simply is the P, X, and L waves. What is the type of arrival of seismic wave type X? A, 2 minutes. B, 2.5 minutes. C, 3 minutes. D, 3.5 minutes. We realize that the recording time moves from 2, 4, 6, 8, and progressively. Now, what is the mind of this question? Remember that we said geology is an interrelational science which uses knowledge of other subjects like chemistry, physics, and mathematics. Now, we are using our knowledge of interpretation of graph from mathematics to answer this question. Because the diagram is a graph. So to get the correct answer of this question, we are expected to extrapolate, go to the, the, the drawing and look at the appearance of the first wave movement. And you come down to the graph. And when you do that straight as you see the pointer on your screen, you realize that it's at the middle between two and three. Hence, that point is 2.5 minutes. So the correct answer, the, the, since it's two, in between 2 and 3, we see that it is 2.5. Hence, the correct answer is 2.5 minutes. Remember, you extrapolate. You go to the diagram, see where the first appearance of P waves were recorded, and then come down to the minutes portion and then see which figure it ties. And when you do that, you have 2.5 as the correct answer. Question 7. Choose from the options below the right orders in which seismic waves are recorded by the seismograph. A. S wave, P wave, L waves. B. P wave, L wave, P wave. C, P wave, S wave, L wave, D, L wave, P wave, S wave. This question is testing your understanding of the arrival of the different types of waves. I will just explain a few minutes ago that the first set of waves that are recorded by the recording station are the P waves or primary waves, followed by the S waves and lastly L waves. Hence, the correct answer for this question is C. P waves are the first to arrive at the recording station, they are followed by S waves, and then the last set of waves to arrive at the recording station 
A L wave. So that's the order P S I L. It should never go out of your mind. Question eight. The instrument used for measuring the intensity of an earthquake is called A, the rich that scale, B, the modified mechanic scale, C, the seismometer, D, the seismograph. The Richter scale is a scale used for measuring the magnitude of an earthquake. The seismometer is simply the instrument used for recording the different types of earthquake waves. And the seismograph is simply the drawing made by the pen of a seismometer. Hence, the correct answer for this question is B, the measuring instrument for the measuring the intensity of an earthquake is the modified mechanical scale. Question nine: Which of these could be used to detect and record earthquakes? A, nanometer and geophone. B, geophone and seismogram. C, seismogram and seismometry. D, GPS, geophone, seismic meter. A nanometer we know is used for measuring pressure and geophone for recording and detecting earthquakes. But now you are supposed to choose an answer that has two instruments or three instruments, two or more instruments that can be used for detecting and recording earthquakes. So A cannot be our correct answer. B, geophone. Yes, we use a geophone to record or detect earthquakes. And we can only use a seismograph for recording and detection of earthquakes. We cannot use a seismogram. Seismogram is the drawing produced by the pen of a seismogram. And seismometry is a word just to confuse you. GPS, we cannot use GPS to detect. So the most correct answer for this question is B. We use the geophone and the seismograph. During the occurrence of an earthquake, there was total destruction of buildings, bridges and roads. What would be its magnitude on a Richter scale? Richter scale is used to measure the magnitude, the amount of destruction caused by an earthquake and it is graded from 1 to 8 or 8, 10 and above. So we have A, 6, B, 6.5, C, 7, D, 8. The correct answer for our question 9 is D. On the Richter scale, a, an earthquake that causes massive discussion of buildings and bridges and roads is called, is given the value 8. Question 10. The movement of hot liquid rock below and above the crust is called A. Volcanism. B. Magma. C. Magmatism. D. Volcano. The correct answer for our question 10 is Volcanism. Volcanism is a process which involves the movement of hot liquid rock below and above the cross. Magma is a liquid rock which is below the cross. When it gets to this above the cross or to the surface of the cross, it's no longer magma, it is termed lava. And then magmatism is a process that will lead to the accumulation of the hot liquid rock within the earth. And a volcano is a cone shape or a hill formed by the a fusion of materials that have been ejected from within the earth. So the correct answer is volcanism. Mm -hmm. Question 11. It is a channel through which magma from the magmatic chamber gets to the surface. A. Volcano. 
B, F, J, C, V, D, Vent. The channel through which magma from the Mamazu channel gets to the surface is called a vent. That's a pathway of mamating magma from the Mamazu channel moving to the surface. A volcano is the shape that is produced when this mantina gets to the surface. A fissure is a crack, while a vein is a joint that is being filled by hydrothermal fluid. Question 12. A wide crater formed by the collapse of a volcano. A. Caldera. B. Lake. C. Crater. D. Volcanic block. The correct answer is a caldera. A caldera is the crater that is formed when a volcano collapses. Question 13. A coconut depression that surrounds the bed of a volcano is A. Uvalas B. Volcanic cone C. Crater D. Caldera Correct answer to this question is A, a crater. A crater is a copulite depression that surrounds the vent of a volcano. Question 14. The main source of materials ejected during an eruption is 1. A, sorry, lava. B, magmatic chamber. C, magma. D, tephra. The correct answer to this question is A. Mamati chamber. Materials that are ejected during an eruption come from the Mamati chamber. We have been saying it all along because of this lesson. Question 15. The process that leads to the formation of magma at the upper mantle and cross is called A. Magma upwelling. B. Crustal movement. C. Mantle friction. D. Partial melting. And the correct answer to this question is D. Partial melting. Question 16. Magma derived from the crust are rich in the following principal elements A. Potassium, sodium, silicon, and magnesium, and aluminium. B. Silicon, magnesium, iron, and calcium. C. Calcium, potassium, sodium, and iron. D. Sodium, calcium, and potassium. The correct answer is potassium, sodium, silicon, and aluminium. Question 17. The most common type of magma occurring at continental rifts and hot spots is A. Continental magma, B. Basic magma, C. Acidic magma, D. Intermediate magma. Our correct answer for this question is Acidic magma. There is nothing like Continental magma. Question 18. The viscosity of magma will depend on A. Its ability to flow, B. Temperature at which it was formed, C. Silica content and temperature of the magma. D. Chemical composition of the magma. The correct answer to this question is D. C. The silica content and the temperature of the magma determine the viscosity of magma. To enable us to summarize the pick out the salient points for you to keep in your mind, we use our standard textbook for geology, ordinary level geology from 4 and 5 science, second edition, written by Kenneth Usimbom and published by Grassroot Publishers. We even use Fundamentals of Geology by APA and others. We use the dictionary of Penny Dictionary of Geology and F science. We have come to the end of our lesson 29. See you 
in our next lesson. Una tege si ma tege yob, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia niña ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia niña ne injo bia yen 